Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Scriptures. Today we are continuing on in the book of Judges, and we are now on chapter 6, and it is titled, Midian Oppresses Israel. The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian overpowered Israel, and because of Midian, the people of Israel made for themselves the dens that are in the mountains, in the caves, in the strongholds. For wherever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza, and leaving nothing in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents. They would come like locusts in number. Both they and their camels could not be counted, so that they laid waste the land as they came in. And Israel was brought very low because of Midian. And the people of Israel cried out for help to the Lord. When the people of Israel cried out to the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the people of Israel. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them up before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terabith at Aphra, which belonged to Joash the Abrazite, which his son Gideon was beaten out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. And he said to him, If now I have found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that it is you who speak with me. Please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And he said, I will stay till you return. So Gideon went into his house and prepared a young goat and unleavened cakes from flour. The meat he put in a basket and the broth he put in a pot and brought them to him under the terabith and presented them. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes and put them on this rock and pour the broth over them. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened cakes and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it stands, which belongs to the Abba's rights. That night the Lord said to him, Take your father's bull and the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asherah that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold here, with stones laid in due order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah that you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the men of the town to do it by day, he did it by night. When the men of the town rose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the Asherah beside it was cut down, and the second bull was offered on the altar that had been built. And they said to one another, Who has done this thing? And after they had searched and inquired, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the town said to Joash, Bring out your son that he may die, for he has broken down the altar of Baal and cut down the Asherah beside it. But Joash 
said to all who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you save him? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because his altar has been broken down. Therefore, on that day, Gideon was called Jeroboam, that is to say, let Baal contend against him, because he broke down his altar. Now all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came together, and they crossed the Jordan and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon, and he sounded the trumpet, and the Abersrites were called out to follow him, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, and they too were called out to follow him, and he sent messengers to Asher, Zebulon, and Naphtali, and they went up to, went up to meet them. Then Gibeon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, behold, I am laying a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece alone, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so, when he rose early the next morning and squeezed the fleece, he wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl with water. Then Gideon said to God, Let not your anger burn against me. Let me speak just once more. Please let me test just once more with the fleece. Please let it be dry on the fleece only, and on all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, and it was dry on the fleece only, and on all the ground there was dew. Chapter 7 Then Gideon and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was north of them, by the hill of Moray, in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, The people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel boast over me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore pro- proclaim it in the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return home and hurry away from Mount Gilead. Then twenty-two thousand of the people returned, and ten thousand remained. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Take them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. And any one of whom I say to you, This one shall go with you, shall go with you. And any one of whom I say to you, This one shall not go with you, shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, you shall set by himself. Likewise, everyone who kneels down to drink. And the number of those who lapped, put in their hands to their mouths, was three hundred men, but all the rest of the people knelt down to drink water. And the Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men who lapped, I will save you, and give the Midianites into your hand, and let all the others go, every man to his home. So the people took provisions in their hands and their trumpets. And he sent all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, but retained the three hundred men. And the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. That same night the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Perah, your servant, and you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hand shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Perah, his servant, to the outposts of the armed men who were in the camp. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the people of the east lay along the valley like locusts in abundance. And their camels were without number as the sand that is on the seashore in abundance. When Gideon came, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade. And he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream and beheld a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it so that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent lay flat. And his comrade answered, There is no other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has given into his hand Midian and all the camp. As soon as Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped. And he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the host of Midian into your hand. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies and put trumpets into the hands of all of them and empty jars with torches inside the jars and he said to them look at me and do likewise when i come to the outskirts of the camp do as i do when i blow the trumpet i and all who are with me then blow the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and shout for the lord 
and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, when they had just set the watch, and they blew the trumpet and smashed the jars that were in their hands. Then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars. They held in their left hands the torches, and in their right hand the trumpets to blow, and they cried out, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Every man stood in his place around the camp, and all the army ran. They cried out and fled. When they blew the three hundred trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his comrade, against all the army. And the army fled as far as Beth Shittah, toward Zerah, as far as the border of Abel Malo by Tabath. And the men of Israel were called out from Naphtali and from Asher and from all Manasseh, and they pursued after Midian. Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and capture the waters against them as far as Beth Barah and also the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they captured the water as far as Beth Barah and also the Jordan. And they captured the two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. Then they pursued Midian, and they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon across the Jordan. Chapter 8 Then the men of Ephraim said to him, What is this that you have done to us, not to call us when you went to fight against Midian? And they accused him fiercely. And he said to them, What have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the grape harvest at Abizar? God had given into your hand the princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. What have I been able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger against him subsided when he said this, and Gideon came to the Jordan and crossed over. He and the three hundred men who were with him, exhausted yet pursuing, so he said to the men of Sukkoth, Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are exhausted, and I am pursuing after Ziba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. And the officials of Sukkoth said, Are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna already in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? So Gideon said, Well then, when the Lord has given Ziba and Zalmunna into my hand, I will flail your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And from there he went up to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth had answered. And he said to the men of Penuel, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Ziba and Zalmunna were in Karkor with their army, about 15,000 men, all who were left of all the army of the people of the east, for there had fallen a hundred and twenty thousand men who drew the sword. And Gideon had fa- went up by the way of the tent dwellers east of Nobah and Jagbaha and attacked the army, for the army felt secure. And Ziba and Zalmunna fled, and he pursued them and captured the two kings of Midian, and he threw all the army into a panic. Then Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle by the ascent of Heres, and he captured a young man of Sukkoth and questioned him, and he wrote down for him the officials and elders of Sukkoth, seventy-seven men. And he came to the men of Sukkoth and said, Behold, Ziba and Zalmunna, about whom you taunted me, saying, Are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna already in your hand, that we should get bread to your men who are exhausted? And he took the elders of the city, and he took thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them taught the men of Sukkoth a lesson. And he broke down the tower of Penuel and killed the men of the city. Then he t- said to Zaba and Zalmunna, Where are the men whom you killed at Tabor? They answered, As you are, so were they. Every one of them resembled the son of a king. And he said, They were my brothers, the sons of my mother. As the Lord lives, if you have saved them alive, I would not kill you. So he said to Jether, his firstborn, Rise and kill them. But the young man did not draw his sword, for he was afraid, because he was still a young man. Then Ziba and Zalmunna says, Rise yourself and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon rose and killed Ziba and Zalmunna, and he took the crescent 
ornaments that were on the necks of their camels. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your sons and your grandson also, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you, but the Lord will rule over you. And Gideon said to them, Let me make a request of you. Every one of you give me the earrings from his spoil. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a cloak, and every man threw in it the earrings of his spoil. And the weight of the golden earrings that he he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold, besides the crescent ornaments and the pendants and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, and beside the collars that were around the necks of the camels. And Gideon made an ephod of it and put it in his city, And all Israel whored after it, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his family. So Midian was subdued before the people of Israel, and they raised their heads no more, and the land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. Gideon, the son of Joash, went and lived in his own house. Now Gideon had seventy sons, his own offspring, for he had many wives. And his concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, And he called his name Abimelech. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Joash, his father. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again, whored after the Baals, and made Baal Bereth their God. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies on every side. And they did not show steadfast love to the family of Gideon in return for all the good that he had done to Israel. Okay, we're going to stop there for today, and we will continue again tomorrow morning. And I thank you for watching. Have a blessed day, everyone.